I recently had a conversation with a newbie coach who had been out in the industry for about a year or two, and she was struggling with coming up with her own niche. And the biggest problem that she related to me was the fact that this new identity as a coach, it doesn't feel connected, it doesn't feel resonate, and she has been struggling with identifying herself as a coach. And there's something about this new role, this new identity that just keep her feeling like she's an imposter. And so if that is you, my friend, today we're going to talk about how do you deal with this identity crisis and actually how do you leverage it and how do you resolve it so that finding your niche is not so damn hard. If you're new to me, I'm Michelle, and I am a visibility and marketing coach. For those of you who's badass, courageous queen looking to build a profitable full-time coaching business, I'm passionate about helping you to simplify your marketing so that you can get seen, get heard, and get paying clients. I recently came across a post on Facebook and that was talking about, do you have to be good at something to coach on that? And I know this is a common struggle for a lot of coaches who come to me and they're trying to find their niche, trying to find a place to stand in this big industry, especially if you're new to that first maybe three years into your business and you're looking to discover that niche. You're trying to find that magic bullet that would just solve a lot of your marketing issue. And so one of the responses I gave to this post is that the fact that this is something that Amy Porterfield had talked about and she called it the 10% edge. And I'm going to share the episode to her episode down in the description box below. So definitely go and check it out. But the point is that you don't need to know everything in order to be good at something. You just need to have that 10% edge compared to the rest of the people who are just getting started, right? You may be three years down the line, or maybe you even have 10 years of, of experiences on your belt, but you just need that a little head start compared to the rest of the uh, clients that you're serving for. Now, this is particularly true for life coaching and mindset coaches, because you do have that skills that you have already learned and acquired because of your journey and how far you have come. So compared to the people who are just in the beginning of the stage, who doesn't have the skill, who doesn't have the mindset strategies of how to eliminate some of the negative self-talk, for example, you are already ahead of them. The 10% edge, what do you do with that 10%? Once you have that 10%, you can do a number of things, right? You can hold on to that 10% and never improve, or chances are, if you're a coach, you have this in inherited growth mindset, you continue want to learn and grow. So essentially with that 10%, you're probably going to take it and make it to the next level. You want to continue to grow on that 10%. So your 10% become 20%, become 30%, become 50%, and eventually it becomes 100%, which makes you the expert in that field. And so all you have to start it's just starting with that 10% edge. And so do I feel that I need to be good at something in order to coach it? Absolutely not. What you need is that 10% is good enough compared to the people and the rest of the world where they're at is at 0%. And here's why a lot of coaches fail in marketing because there are so many coaches just thinking about, oh my gosh, I only have this 10%. I am not good enough. I will never be good enough in order to help my clients to achieve what they want to achieve. And I can't promise anybody a result or a outcome. And therefore I'm just simply not good enough to do this in the first place. And so if that is how you think my friend, then today is the day to change. So think about this and approach this. There are three questions I want you to start asking yourself every time this, am I good enough to coach on this? These are the three questions that I want you to ask. One is why are you doing this? Why on earth are you a coach in the first place? And if you can ask, answer that question right, then a lot of these 
imposter syndromes and the things that you're telling yourself, which is not true, it's going to result because your why, when it's big enough, then none of these will be a hinder or a roadblock for you in continue to move forward in your coaching business journey. So the big question to ask, number one is, why am I doing this? Like, why are you doing this? Why are you even do, starting to coach? And then the second question I want you to ask is, what result will my client be able to accomplish after they work with me, right? That's really big because you want to think about what's in it for them. Why you're doing it, maybe out of passion, you're really passionate about helping the world, you want to make a difference, but what's in it for your people? What's in it for them? That's the second biggest question I want you to think about. What's in it for them? You're doing this not for you, it's for them. So while you're thinking about you only have this 10%, the rest of the world only got 0%. And here you are, we're so absorbed in our own thoughts and our own mind, we'll forget that by stopping and hiding behind the curtain, we're not actually here to to serve others. So what's in there for your audience and what's in there for them to actually receive the service that you're providing? So that's the second question. The third question is how familiar are you on the subject you're going to be talking about, whether it is on a podcast or videos or you're writing and creating posts, what is the most familiar subject that you want to talk about? Maybe it's out of your personal experiences. It could be you're overcoming something that you personally struggle in your own journey. And that could be something out of your personal experience that you can have that 10% 10, 10 edge. So here are the three questions that you should be asking yourself on a constant basis every time this idea of Am I good enough to coach? Or am I good enough to talk about this? Am I good enough to actually start a podcast and be the subject matter? Here are the three questions I want you to think about. Number one is why am I doing this? What is the reason for me being here? And number two is what's in it for my audience? What type of result is my client going to get after they start listening to me or after they start working with me? The number three big question is how familiar am I on the subject that I'm going to talk about? And this could be out of your own personal experiences, how you were able to overcome something and receiving what you're able to accomplish. So comment down below, let me know what topic or subjects are you most comfortably can talk about day in, day out. In other words, what are you so passionate about? And so let's get a conversation going. And until then, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.